Hey, well, welcome back to Inside Personal Growth. I have returning author uh, joining me from British Columbia, Vancouver, British Columbia. And this is the book, The End Game, The Metronomics Monograph. Um, I'm going to put a link to this, Shannon uh, Sesco, nice. to let everybody know to get this book and to your website. And for all those who want to know more, about metronomics, go to metronomics, M-E-T-R-O-N-O-M-I-C-S dot com. And there you'll see some information about Shannon. Shannon is the founder of it. Well, Shannon, it's a pleasure to have you on. I think we could tell everybody you're the author of how many other books? The Three Three Way. Other Books. Three okay. Other Books. Three yep. Other Books. Three uh, Other Books. She created the Three, three Hag and the Leader Training Certificate. Been doing this over yeah. 20 years, building high performance companies. She built her own high performance company in the financial services industry. She also co founded and served as CEO and led the sale of two companies in less than six years apart. Uh, Serveco, is that right? S E sub sub sir subservio. Subservio, sorry. We were brutal at picking company names. But yeah, you were. <laughs> subservio and Paradata. Yep, founded in 95. Paradata, I could get. For you <laughs> who want to learn more about this, um, go to her website. She's really in corporate. She's really got, I can't tell people enough, and I don't down other companies, but if you're looking for a software system to help you be more efficient in your company, you can't do better than going uh, to Metronomics. Yeah. Seriously. Thank you. Um, and, you know, there's lots of them out there with lots of coaches, and lots of peaches, people that help them. Um, but she's really put all the best of the best into this software, which is why I think it makes it one of the best. Um, so, Shannon, you said you wrote three other books. We've been by sharing the genesis of the end game of the metronomic monograph. Mm -hmm. What inspired you to want to write another book? You already have... <sighs> Books. I know. I know. <laughs> so what's the Look, deal? I mean, writing... I have almost 1,100 <laughs> interviews under my belt, and I'm going like, and and they don't stop coming. I get requests for about three or four a week. So yeah. So writing a fourth book, writing a book is hard. We like writing a book is hard. Doesn't matter if it's long or short. It's still hard. Um, having you know, we wrote the metronome effect, sort of give the street version of what it's like to use this metronomics business operating system to grow one, not one, but two companies. And we used it in four companies myself. And so we wrote it to share it, prescriptive, get it done. Then from there, you know, funny enough, I didn't write about the three hag in that first book. I was very naive. I thought everyone had a three hag. Uh, everybody did a uh, three year highly achievable goal and married it up with your strategy and your execution. And I learned that no, that wasn't a fact. So we had Did a that great come from Vern Harnish. Three hag? Yeah. I mean, no. I don't know where the inception of it was, but it's been talked about for years and years. And a lot of the big uh, Accenture and all of them in yeah. their consulting gigs uh, have the three hag. So you wrote about the three hag because you well, forgot we... about it in the first book. Well, yeah, yeah there was. There, we, there was a few reasons why we didn't put it in the first book, but one of the biggest was like, we just thought everyone had a three-year highly achievable goal. And what we learned after the fact and after I became a coach is that, you know, that's the secret sauce to all of this. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's a secret sauce to metronomics. It was a secret sauce of not only establishing and creating your strategy, but mapping it out over 12 quarters and fluidly mapping it out from where you are now to there. So you could connect your annual plan to your three-year plan, not your five-year super wild ass guess. And we always had a 10 to 30 year, like that's right out of Jim Collins, but there was a gap. If we went from one year to 10 plus years, nobody really get- Well, you, know, you can't do that because the mind doesn't work that way. It does no. things incrementally. And so you have to have proximal goals, right? Yeah. And so a three tag is a proximal goal to, you know, maybe your bigger vision for 30 years or 20 yeah. years, you know? 
And the, so. the secret of it is we get to light, like, you know, draw a line in the sand where you want to be three years from now, but then you get to build up your strategy and how you're going to achieve it. So you get to say where you want to be, and then you get to actually figure out how to get there. Hmm. Most don't do that. Most, most people just keep going like, oh, I got one year. I got one year, one year. Oh, I'm still not to where I want to be in five years. Oh, another one year, another one year. This allowed us to, you know, really uh, align our one-year plan while well, our quarterly plan, our one-year plan to our three-year plan and be able to like reach out and touch it. It's really well, you do it. You do it so well and so systematically. So there's a lot of people listening right now that don't know the term metronomic. They might know it from mm. the metronome that yeah. people have on their piano. My wife's a school teacher. Yes. Um, but tell us about the concept of metronomic and how it has mm -hmm. set the foundation for all yeah. of your books, your yes. company, everything, the rhythm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you know, funny. So metronome is sort of like the, the theme throughout the third book is metronomics. And it's a, you know, I'm not going to lie. It's a big fat book that gives it's a recipe book. It tells you exactly how you can improve your performance, what you should do from your working with your team all the way through. And the rhythm of all of it is set by you, the leader, by the CEO sets the rhythm. And the team goes along with the rhythm. So the metrodome came from the idea that it's not just a cadence. It's a cadence that is set by the leader of the organization. And if, you know, I play, I grew up playing the piano is where it came from. And my teacher would set, you know, whatever, you know, would move the little fob along, you know, to say what, what rhythm did I have to play to? And so that's what a CEO does. We get to set the rhythm. We get to say what it is and we want to hold it consistent. That's where metronomics comes from. It's the metronome that represents the CEO, the economics, which is being able to balance your life and your work. And then the metric, the third piece in there is all about the widget. The one thing that you and your team control are the things that flow through your business. Well, those, those are, are the three widgets. components. What makes up the system as well as the seven systems that you talk about in this yes. repeatable playbook? Because yes. you just mentioned the three components. Those were them. Yes. If you want to repeat them for the listeners, I think that might be good. But yeah. also, it'd be good to know these, these seven systems that mm -hmm. are part of the repeatable playbook. Yeah. So metronomics itself made up of three things, as Greg just said. One is the repeatable playbook that has seven systems. I'm going to talk about that. The second thing is having a scoreboard that's alive that everyone's connected to. The team must mm -hmm. be connected to it. No different than if you're playing on the field, you'd be connected to the scoreboard. Well, right. when you're playing on the business field, you need to be connected to the scoreboard and the open playing field. And then the third thing is having, and I want, and I not to interrupt you, but I am, I want people to understand that you've built this software system that if people can really run their business from and have their team yes. meetings. And here's the thing. It's live. I know a lot of business owners, small bid, mid, mid size, whatever, you know, they use an Excel spreadsheet, right. Or they use something to put it together, but it's not synchronistic. Right. It's like, right. okay, somebody in one department has a spreadsheet. Somebody else has a spreadsheet. Right. You're not sure that it yours is live data as it changes live. on the platform yes. on, in the yes. cloud. Everything changes so people can see it across the board. Yeah. Now, that's not a new concept by any means, no. but it is when it really comes to having a back end system to kind of run your business like you guys have created. Yeah. So what yeah. are the seven systems in the repeatable playbook? Seven systems in the repeatable playbook, cultural system, right? That sounds crazy, but we must have a system to keep our culture alive, right? Consistent behavior. Second system is the cohesive system. That is a system every day we're working and growing our cohesiveness because it shifts each and every day. We as leaders need to be focused on it. It's about growing a team connected to the score. Right. The third system is the human system that is having the awareness and the understanding of your what you own every day. What what is the function that you own? What is the clarity of what you're accountable for? Every team member needs to have clarity of what they're accountable for. The third system 
is the cash system. Love the cash system. You must forecast cash first. And I will, we'll talk a little bit more about how important that is. And it's related to the things that, you know, flow through your organization. You mean cash flow? No, ca forecast cash first. Okay, forecast cash. Yeah. So forecast cash. sales. How much cash will be in the bank? Okay. How much cash will be in the bank at the end of every month? Okay. That was a game changer for me. Absolute game changer to then make decisions upon to, you know, how are we going to go left, right, and get to where we need to go in regards to how are we going to say what we're going to do? It always comes back to cash at the end of the day in business. We have the execution system, ties very tightly to cash. We have the strategy system. The strategy system is a hard edge system. The execution system is a hard edge system. The cash system is a hard edge system because you can reach out and touch it. You can build the plan around it. There is numbers, there are measures. The soft edge systems, which are the actual strength of this whole business operating system is the cultural, cohesive and human. We call those the soft edge systems. They're a little harder, a little harder to measure there and put lines in the sand. But if we do not pay attention to our consistent behavior, how our team trust and commitment and conflict and accountability is built aligned with what clarity of what we are, what we own every day, if those aren't clear, it's really hard that the hard edge system will go really well. We can have a great Where are you plan. putting are you putting human capital? Are you going to stick that in the soft edge system? Yes. Yes, okay. that goes in the human. But that's system. where we spend most of our money. If you look at our salaries, that's the biggest percentage of uh, the cost of doing business. Number, number one and So you got to get A players and A seats. That's right. That's the human <laughs> okay. system. That's okay. the human system and that's where I love I love that because that's ties so closely to our execution and cash system which is about you know bringing on you know we need an A player team we want to have the lowest possible labor cost we can the more A players we have the lower our overall labor cost the more A players we have the lower our overall labor cost will be. Now, people are not going to correlate the more A players, the higher salaries, that you're going to have a lower cost. Mm, so yes. describe that for them, because the yes. first thing they're going to say is, this woman is crazy. She's flipping crazy. <laughs> they're going to say uh, that anyway. But <laughs> an A player, one A player will on average equal at least three people on your team. Yep. So that's the correlation to the total overall lower because their cost. performance is higher their performance right? is three they're times doing higher. more in less time with less yeah. resources because more they're resourceful time. them themselves very yes. much so very much yeah. so and a lot of people will say greg like what's an a player right i have a players you know and i you probably do and i hope you do but an a player is someone that is out in front of you someone that you are cheering on someone that brings you energy, someone you would fight for if they got a competing offer, someone that you would rehire like on the spot. Anyone else, someone that you're pulling along, someone that you're like going, you got to do this next, got to do that. You know, th that is like, that so is what are you investing player. in these people, Shannon, to help make them A players? Look, not everybody on your team is always an A player. But if I have to invest in human capital yes. and I'm going to invest in um, personal growth stuff, I'm going to invest in anything that I can, like my show, you know, that's why I get so many people totally. from LinkedIn that listen to it because it's like, it's about business. It's right. about personal growth. It's about wellness. Yes. It's about spirituality. All of those are components of an A player. Yes. Um, so you've been in this long enough. And we talked about the hard edge and the soft set yes. systems. You've spoken about the seven systems. You've yeah. spoken about the three components in a very short period of time. Now, share with us a real world case or antidote from a business that successfully has applied the metronomic approach. And what was the transformation that they witnessed? Yeah, so... You can share more than one, but if you've got one, that I'll, would be I'll give you one. And it's actually stories are always the best. People love stories. 
<laughs> this story is a great story. So, and, and Milo's T is, uh, you know, their stories in the M game. So Milo's T stories in the M game. And I started working with them six years ago. They, uh, you know, in around under a hundred million, uh, didn't know their capacity and total capacity of production. Um, and it's, it's really, it's a, it's a great story. The leadership team there, it's 70 year old company, 70 year old family company, amazing story to get to that point. CEO, Trisha Walwork, um, you know, heard me speak, called me up. We chatted, we thought there was a fit between us. We start out on uh, our coaching and uh, business journey. Um, today, they have doubled every year. That's their top line, doubled every year. But what if you ask Trisha, what was the biggest thing for creating not only the foundation for growth, but the momentum they've gone through, and now they're in that compounding phase. Yeah, it's really nice the top line's compounding. There's lots of uh, organizations that get you know, that fiscal outcome, but it is hair on fire everywhere else hair on fire in the company, they're hanging on. The thing that we had to do to keep up with that growth is was all about growing A players, creating uh, an environment that had uh, consistent real-time feedback. I was just with them uh, a week and a half ago. I love- you started, feedback. did they have systems in place that were working effectively and you they, modified? Because usually behind all of this, are truly highly effective systems, right? Yes. So they, this, and you know this, because we've talked about this before, metronomics will meet a company where they are. So mm -hmm. they had some systems in place. They had execution, they had cash. You can't exist without those, right? But what we needed to really uh, focus in on was how do we ensure we get the soft edge systems lined up with where they were on their execution system and their cash system, so their business. And a lot of people go, really? Like that's what, you know, turned the dial? Well, what we've learned in doing this for 25 years is really unlocking, unlocking growth is all about lining up an A player leadership team that is cohesive, that is cohesive, meaning can have the healthy conflict, provide real-time feedback to each other in the moment, in order to move that team through to create a really highly uh, debated strategy, validated strategy, confidence in the validated strategy. When I met them, they were executing. They were driving around the block quite well. They were, they were where they wanted to be at that time. They did want more. They wanted more growth. They thought they could do more growth. They didn't know how to unlock it. And spending mm -hmm. time on the team, the culture, the cohesiveness, it sounds all soft. And most people go, oh my gosh, I don't want to spend time there. But then the, the piece that's really, really important is the human system. It's the clarity of what each other's doing, the clarity of role, the clarity of how we are going to actually grow together. And so, you know, it's funny uh, when I saw- It was a light bulb I, moment for them. Yes. It's almost like, you know, lightning strikes and there's a light bulb moment. You actually see it happen. There's actually a shift in the energy inside of a company when you I do. May, you uh, uh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and it's you, not just with one person. It's with everybody usually. Um, because yeah. what happens is it's almost like there's this, uh, I just, I'll just say it. It's there's this tapestry of all these many little pieces and everybody starts to see the integral piece of this piece of this bigger tapestry and where they fit yeah. Yeah. and why it's so important. And you're an, you're just so good at that. You know, okay. now we're going to have entrepreneurs out there that are listening yes. to this show yeah. that are like, I've done it my way. I know how to do it my way. They're going to be skeptical. They're going to say, how can somebody come in with some kind of back end system and a book and tell me what to do? So when you introduce this new systems into businesses, what do you really say to them to persuade and or convince them that there is huge value in metronomics? Yeah, it's, it, uh, so this is gonna sound counterintuitive to that question, 
So most, there, there are lots of leaders who are listening in that, that are saying, yep, yeah, we're good. We're good. We've been growing at three, four, 5% every year. Yeah, exactly. It's what we wanted. We're good. And I say, that's amazing. Carry on. And then there's others I meet along the way going, oh my gosh, I want to be there and I can't figure out how to get there. I promised that we would be there. I'm letting my team down. I took investment and we said we'd be there. And I, I have no idea how to get there. They are absolutely stuck. Those are the, the ones. Those are the ones that hear this system and go, they, and I'm going to say it, they are desperate enough to try this system. Well, there's a pain point. Both of there's those a pain point. Both of them we talked about have a pain. The people that you said are 3% are plotting along. They've got it. Good but you got to undercover, undercover whatever pain it is that metronomics could help them with. Yeah. The people well, that say we were going to be all the way out here and they've got a huge gap between where they are and where they want to be, they've got a much bigger pain, yeah. right? Yeah. And so it's easier to work with them, right? But, you know, it's interesting, Greg, because a couple of my clients that I've had for going on eight years, nine years, 10 years, one's 11 years. You know, 11 years ago, you know, the CEO came to me and said, you know, would you work with me? Gave me the whole reason why and met them. And I decided, yeah, that that would be fun. They were wanting to put this in place to exit in three years. Okay. That was 11 years ago. They didn't exit in three years. They could have. They didn't exit in three years because why they wanted to exit was it was hard for that three, four, five percent growth. It was everything on their shoulders. It was, you know, they owned every function. They owned every decision. They were not having fun. And so now you, you go three years out and we said, okay, like, you know, we went through the, the whole thing and, and, and Robert said, honestly, I, I don't really want to sell the business now because the system's in place and running. They're actually, you know, the, the cliche of metronomics, it's grow up your team, your business and your life, meaning finding the balance. Metronomics brings balance to your team and your business and your life. And it sounds like such a cliche, but it's the only way I was able to actually grow my own businesses. You know, my first one, my first one, I think you know this, I had three kids in less than three years and no twins. And it was a system that allowed us to still keep growing the company while I was having my life as well. And so many entrepreneurs and leaders have to choose one or the other. We don't want right. anyone to choose, right? No, and we I look want at you to have both. No, you have to have yeah. both. Life yeah. is, you, you want to excel in like what you love to do and you've got to love showing up. It's got to bring you energy. All the more and, reason to have A yes. players in the seats because if yes. you want to take time for your family, and you're having to babysit somebody other than no your babysitting two year old, no. three year old, and four year old, you're going to have some issues, right? Yeah. And you know, I, I remember Margaret Wheatley from many years ago talking about the ecosystem. You know, the ecosystem of our environments outside, but how they relate so closely to the ecosystem of a business. And you know, when you get, you know, all these microorganisms working in unison together, what you can create and grow which is completely different out of other. Yeah. I always loved her analogy because it is, it's, it's a microorganism and an ecosystem, yeah. which is growing and it almost takes on a life of its own. Yeah. Right. And yeah. that's what you want. You want it to be that, you know, I was listening to Tim cook the other day. Uh, uh, Apple is now worth uh, $3 trillion. Yeah. Steve Jobs died. It's grown 30 times since Steve yeah. Jobs has died, which means yeah. the ecosystem and the systems that they have in place are just phenomenal to have a business carry on at that astronomical rate yes. uh, of where it is. So what do you believe business strategists or people that are approaching this in general? Things have changed over time. We have all these business strategists that come on and talk about these different approaches and where they are. Um, where does metronomics fit into this evolution cycle of business? I mean, 
Um, I've heard it all through all the interviews that I've done. And I basically would love to know where you sit with that. Yeah. So growing up, my first company, huge uh, groupie of all the strategic thought leaders out there, right? Like learn Michael Porter, right? Get in there. Uh, He's on my mind right now because like I geeked out on Michael Porter back in the day. Um, Then there's others, right? That, That take you right into thinking about the product the strategy for your product, where we ended up and where I ended up just purely by following all these thought leaders was I really needed to set a strategy for our company, position our company in the market we play. Then you can deep dive into strategy for your product and all those pieces. And so the strategy system is the key system that holds the team and the business systems together. That's why the three hags so important. And building up a strategy rather than top downing a strategy was the key thing. A collaborative strategy with A players on your leadership team who can have healthy conflictive discussions gets you to be able to create a really confident strategy for your company, for your company. So we play Like everything we do is, yeah, we go into the core customer, we go into the market and do all those analysis, we map it all out, we have strategic pictures, but the big deal is it's not in one narrow industry, in one narrow product. We actually look side to side in industry wide enough so that you can see the white space to create the unique and valuable position you need in order to either you're in it and protect it or not. And the strategy system is one that, you know, I I think of the company I was talking about earlier, 11 years they've been doing this, 11 years with this strategy system and all the other systems that, you know, go, they're all connected, right? Yeah. Step by step, progress by crest. They're really good at it. They're having a lot of fun with it. And it's okay if you're not like in the beginning, it'll meet you where you are. It will take you you on a journey. What do you see on the horizon? You know, I've had uh, um, Rita McGrath on here, seeing around yeah. corners. Um, yeah. She's she's very successful in working with uh, Solve Next. Yeah. And, you know, in, a, in a, a company that's got processes is great, but they've got to be innovative. So yes. they have to have, they have to treat innovation just like they te- treat their processes. It has to be something. It has to be part of it. it. So, you know, in this kind of post-pandemic world where, We're evolving. We're actually seeing wars fought by drones. That's getting intelligence. Um, You know, you see the AI world evolving Mm. so quickly. Yeah, absolutely. The the announcement. You have software in the back end. What are you kind of forecasting for business owners on somebody who has, you know, their head into the vision of what's going on uh, that could really help them? Something that you might tell them right now. It would be like revolutionary. This is what you might want to think about. Well, I'm going to say two things. One, if you don't have your long-term painted picture done, and I'm talking 10 years out for your business, Mm -hmm. whether you're selling it in three years or not, you have to paint that picture. You don't have to know how to get there on that picture. Your three-year picture, you paint it. That's where the fun begins, Greg, because you need to figure out the how you need to have the members of your team figure out the how now if there are not competencies on your team with the latest and greatest things going on out there and let's take ai for an example you need to get yourself you don't need to know all the geeky computer science details of ai but you need to understand where is it going to play in your strategy is it going to be for differentiation Is it going to be for cost leadership? Is it going to help focus some of your team members in a different place and let AI take some of those more mundane tasks out of your way? We see AI being added to so many pieces of software. I'm not putting you in the corner, but people like HubSpot have AI already. Yes, it's great. uh, Salesforce has AI. Our phone Um, does. Yeah. And so my question would be for you, now we're seeing it pop up and it's being integrated as part of the software. Do you have plans at Metronomics to actually 
add an AI component into yes. this that makes it more intelligent for the people buying your systems? Yeah, so we have it at three levels, right? One will be in around, you know, making sure the member experience on our platform is at another level, getting the response they need, the information they need. But then there's another level to this that we've been working on, which is actually taking the, the intellectual property of the coaching system on the platform and being able to go, oh, you know, looking at the whole picture of where that company is today mm -hmm. in the system and providing feedback to their coach and to the company, the leaders of here's what you should be looking at next. Here's where you should be actually thinking about it and having it teach itself. I mean, that's the most amazing thing is the yeah. opportunity to have the machine learning happen within this system that we already have. And so, yeah. you know, full, full disclosure, I spent all last quarter on AI and strategy for met metronomics. Yeah. And okay. just for the listeners, I mean, I'm a geek, right? I grew up, I have a computer science degree. I have a master's in computer science. It's why things end up in business on platforms, but I'm a huge believer in what this can do to improve how we actually continue to grow ourselves and our companies. And through the well, platform you know, you, we have is so look at it, whether it's chat GBT or it's inside HubSpot or it's inside yeah. Salesforce or wherever, it doesn't matter. Yeah. It's making people much more efficient so in other words, in less time. So now the A players become triple A players. Oh, um, so good. You know, because they so literally good. can they literally can take yeah. um, you know, all of their sales scripts and all of their outbound emails and all of their everything and turn them into much better masterpieces than they could do themselves. Yeah. Um, yeah and that's so why on. we want the artificial intelligence to kind of think for us in a logical sequential fashion. So I'm glad that you're thinking about putting it in and that you got it out and that you're a geek and we're going to see it in metronomics. Well, in, it's coming in fast. The, uh, yeah, it's coming yeah fast. I'm sure it is. And, and you know, it's funny you grab on HubSpot, like that's the, that's the success system we put in our back end. So mm -hmm. that's what we're actually rolling out. And we have, as you would, as you would imagine, a three-year plan. <laughs> we have a three-year plan rolling this in to our operation and our platform and uh yeah it's 12 quarters and uh we just updated it literally like i just updated it at the end of last week so with the well team, i'm going to say to my excited. listeners who are executives sitting in seats you couldn't be with a better person to actually uh, dive in with somebody that's going to grow with you right yes. so you're going to see this software grow um, yeah. And it certainly isn't stagnant now for 99% no. of the listeners. They're going to go, hey, this is the greatest software around. Once you start experiencing it with a coach or an advisor yeah. who's using this system. Now, uh, if there were three takeaways you want to leave our listeners with that would impact them positively or their business and or their organizational culture, what are the things that you would take from this, actually, folks, this mm -hmm. is actually kind of a small little book, yeah. but very Good. impactful. There, it isn't. Yes. You can read this on a uh, forty-five minute plane ride, most definitely. Yeah, it's so good. And that's the way she wanted it, I yeah. guarantee. Yeah. Because <laughs> most people aren't reading four hundred page no. books these days. So tell us what you would say are three takeaways that the listeners should take from this book, and and then I'll let all my listeners know we're going to have a link. Uh, to metronomics, to being able to get into the system, to actually all the books that she's authored. Um, so I want to make certain that, that they understand that. So what are those awesome. three things? So number one, you've got to ask yourself, do, would you rehire? Would you fight for every person on your leadership team? That's the first question. You need to answer that. Answer that question. If the answer is no, you have to figure out a plan on what you need to do about that. That is number one thing that will hold you back. That's on the critical path. Number two, do you and your team have a strategy? And I say you and your team. So as a CEO, you may know the strategy in your head. Does everyone know the strategy? Is it mapped out? It doesn't have to be validated, perfect, but is it known? That's number two. Number three is, and this is a simple one, 
do you have confidence in your execution and cash plan whereby you can forecast how much cash will be in the bank at the end of every month? A lot of people, Greg, go, are you crazy? We're going to forecast cash at the end of the month, every month. And I say, yes, not profit. And this is, if any of you hear anything about this today, is forecast your cash first because profit is made up. Cash, you can put in a wheelbarrow and walk away with it, right? And at the end of the day, our decision should be made on cash and cash forecasting that are related to the things that flow through your business. So people, a player leadership team, if you have one, are they cohesive? How cohesive are they giving each other feedback? Are you having healthy conflict too? Do you have a strategy mapped so everybody can see it and tell the story? If the answer is no, pick up three hag way. It gives you the formula. The last one is all about forecasting cash first. So simple, changed my life. I would say those are words of wisdom, three great takeaways. On top of that, um, you know, we've all been dealing with an inflationary economy, and this was a throw up mm -hmm. question, meaning, and you know, while cash flow and cash is extremely important, what other assets do you believe that a business owner should be looking at today? Oh, because we are in a kind of strange money world. We are. Okay. We are in the fiat money system. Yeah. We're seeing crypto come out and it's gone down through the toilet. We are seeing our money at this point, at least here in the US, North America, uh, we're seeing high inflation and a devalued dollar. Um, and those dollars aren't going as far. What would you say to somebody out there who's listening today who's the CEO of a company and is saying, hey, I'm looking for alternatives, uh, places, uh, we got plenty of cash. I mean, you could think about my example just a minute ago with Tim Cook and $3 trillion. Yeah. What is that $3 trillion doing? Isn't it where you're supposed to be putting the money where it does something positive for the world? <laughs> yes. So that's why forecasting cash is so important because it's not, you don't win if you have a lot of cash. You win if you understand what the plan is for your cash. Okay. Right. And so, you know, I want that. That's just so perfect because with an inflationary market, and if I give an example, I have a few companies I work with that are manufacturing, right? And uh, with everything that's gone up, like all their, their supply everything. chain, the challenges, you know, they pre-booked things years ago that they're delivering on. And uh, so like the number one thing that, that we did out of this is not only forecast cash and where do you plan to use it? How do you use it? What are you going to do with it? The other piece is, is looking at, like we looked end to end within all the businesses I work with, what we call a level two key function flow map. Now, and that's geeky, right? But that's our wording. What that means is we mapped out, like we followed the dollar through our organization so that we could actually have a better handle on where we should be investing our cash, when and why. And like, at first I know teams looked at me like that's crazy, Shannon, when I was working with them. But the fact that we did it at the beginning of this has actually opened up opportunities where we can now invest, right? Where the opportunities have come up, whether it's, you know, lengthening our value chain, shortening our value chain, investing in another company, buying another company. It's been really exciting actually to have done that early on. And like, you know, just on the edge of this, like about a year ago, to actually see what the opportunities are now without just going, oh my gosh, we're still getting hammered by the economic conditions we're working with it. So just that visibility is amazing. I don't know. I try to remember that old statement, failing to plan is planning to fail. <laughs> um, failing to plan is, yes, yes. Yes, <laughs> failing to plan like is that. planning to fail. Yeah, uh, that yeah. was the statement somebody <laughs> said. Uh, mm -hmm. And you are a good example of that. And literally mm -hmm. the fact that you've been able to put out three books, this one, The M Game, uh, all my four listeners. Books. Four books. Four, sorry. Four. I missed one somewhere <laughs> along the way. I got I to gotta, I gotta correct you because they're like, you know, it's hard to write a book. <laughs> I do. And I only have three and you've got four. But look, here's my last the one's a little one. 
This is Whoa. good. They're all good. <laughs> and uh, if you want to get all four of them, I'm sure you go to Amazon and buy all four. Yes. Of them. The other please. thing for coaches that are interested in this, uh, do contact Shannon. Uh, we'll have all the information there for you to be able to Love do it. that because there's lots of people out there listening today might be going, wow, I'd really like to know about how do I become uh, one of the uh, implementers uh, for, for metronomics as well and get certified to do that. And yes. for all of you who are listening who are business owners and you do have that big gap that we talked about, uh, definitely let's reach out to Shannon Metronomics and she can put you in touch with coaches that are regional to actually help you uh, lessen that. that gap. Yep, lessen love that. that gap. And if you love any one of the books, leave a review. That too. <laughs> I yeah. love that feedback. It's not, you know, there's it's always something you can do. Feedback and so is put, good. <laughs> put a feedback on Amazon. Well, Shannon, namaste to you. Thank you for being yeah, on Inside Personal Growth and spending so some time with our listeners. It's always a pleasure having you on. You're always very lively and people, you can <laughs> see why um, her systems work uh, because number one of her background uh, two, the fact she's already done this, proven it. She's gotten feedback from her clients. And three, she's got a strategy and approach to being able to do this. So uh, go to metronomics.com, Canadian-based company. Support our fellow Canadians down here. <laughs> and uh, thanks so much, Shannon. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you.